Well, the inaugural Covered Bridge Festival in 1957 was the little engine that could. Card tables and homemade goods on Rockville's town square. Attendance, uh, maybe slightly under about 250. Today, it's Indiana's largest festival, attracting visitors from all over the country. Around Indiana reporter Mary Rachel Redmond joins us now from historic Park County. Well, Gary, Park County is the covered bridge capital of the world, and there's no doubt these bridges absolutely beautiful. But perhaps what really lures people to the Covered Bridge Festival isn't just the bridges themselves, but the people and the traditions that have been long and strong for over 65 years. That was real good. You want some? I've never eaten nothing like that before. Whether you're just coming for the food or the Hoosier handmade crafts, there's just something about Park County's Covered Bridge Festival that keeps folks from California to Wisconsin and everywhere in between coming back year after year. This is a county of 17,000 people, so imagine the stress on the infrastructure going from 17,000 people to, to uh, one and a half million, which would be about, uh, oh, probably 150, 200,000 people a day descend on us, but we do just fine. What does the Covered Bridge Festival do for these small businesses here in Rockville? So a lot of these small businesses, this is just their their um, time to shine for the year. So they get 10 days of a very captured audience to come in, look at their products. We have a lot of businesses who would not survive without this Covered Bridge Festival, which is tough to have a, a business plan where you're relying on some event that you have absolutely no control over, but you need that so badly. For a lot of businesses, you know, Black Friday is the day you change from being in the red to being in the black and making money. Now, this is Black Friday for most of our local businesses, and they do great. They really count on that, and um, they, look, they look forward to it. They plan for it. And while the economic impact is immeasurable for these small Hoosier towns over the 10-day festival, maybe just as satisfying for a lot of the longtime vendors are the generations of families that have made Covered Bridge an no annual stuff. tradition. No stuff. We've been here 65 years. I had a lady just yesterday who'd been buying candy from us for 57 years. We had a lady last year came up, and she had a little baby in her arms, and we have samples that we give out for people to taste. She took a pinch of the samples, put it in her baby's mouth, and that was the fifth generation of their family who've been buying their, our candy. So you get a lot of the traffic we get coming is people who repeat year after year after year, and they might buy, they may buy 25, 30 bags to take home to family. While the Covered Bridge Festival may have started out small, there's no doubt their traditions, families, and communities that started there continue to grow and thrive thanks to these 10 days in October. We want to continue this because it does bring people in the community, shows them the other things that they can do within Park County. Um, it's been great for recruiting a new population into the county for those that want to step back and take a little bit of slower pace, uh, but still find the amenities that they want. They've realized that Park County has that. Well, behind me is Indiana's most famous covered bridge here in Bridgeton, Indiana. And while there are 31 covered bridges in Park County, these historic structures continue to decrease in number. In fact, Indiana Landmarks placed Fountain County's Cades Mill Cover Bridge on its 10 most endangered list this year. Constructed in 1854, Cades Mill Cover Bridge holds the status as the state's oldest covered bridge, still in its original location. But it's a distinction that could turn into demolition. In 2019, a covered bridge contractor discovered a broken cord, a serious problem that could cause the 150-foot bridge to collapse. Repairs are estimated at over $800,000, and that number will continue to increase the longer it continues to sit untouched. Well, I'll detail more historic Hoosier structures in our Endangered Indiana series in the coming weeks.